So as you all know, Gen surgery was one of the most recent uh, specialties to get in uh, uh, robotic surgery. Uh, this is uh, one of the early studies done by Dr. Tal Tal Talamini and John Hopkins and uh, where they evaluate various uh, uh, procedures uh, to be done uh, robotically. However, at that time the instrumentation was in the first generation. There were some issues about uh, uh, experience, uh, uh, friendliness of the equipment and the cost that uh, we had to wait a little bit longer to start uh, doing robotic general surgical procedures uh, more frequently. At the Cleveland Clinic, we start the uh, uh, general surgery program about three years ago, and so far done over 200 procedures and applied the robot to various uh, endocrine, HPB, upper GI, and lower uh, GI procedures. If you run these specialties, uh, we all know uh, minimally invasive uh, liver surgery is uh, pretty difficult. Uh, the robot was very uh, helpful to move uh, minimally invasive liver surgery to the next level, maybe by being able to do more complex procedures more easily. And already multiple centers have reported a series of a robotic hepatectomy. And interesting is that uh, if you look at about one third of the procedures are hemihepatectomies, uh, suggesting that the robot probably helped to uh, take the minimally invasive uh, liver surgery to the next level. Just to give you an idea about the procedure, we see the most benefit of the robot for hepatectomy is uh, uh, for doing uh, complex procedures where the dissection line might be <coughs> irregular. This is a patient with a correct lumen segment five and quite irregular uh, dissection plane, and we thought the robot would be helpful for this procedure. Uh, and uh, this shows how the port placement is done. We generally use uh, three robotic ports and one or two uh, first assistant ports. Uh, we use either the robotic harmonic scalpel or the harmonic scalpel used by the first assistant. But you can see that with the 3D view and uh, uh, really the wristed instruments, uh, getting into the angles uh, becomes uh, quite easy. And uh, uh, doing these uh, uh, complex resections uh, uh, becomes much easier and uh, with uh, less blood loss as well. And if you have to, you can also do uh, suturing uh, more easily compared to the laparoscopic procedure. And if it, I believe that uh, the robot uh, is going to really help us uh, take uh, the hepatectomy to the next level. We've also looked at uh, comparative data with the laparoscopic series, and it looks like in the early experience, the results are pretty much equivalent to laparoscopic. Uh, pancreas is another uh, organ uh, that was approached uh, robotically recently. Uh, this is one of the recent large series, showed uh, acceptable morbidity and mortality with very complex operation done as well. At the clinic, clinic we follow a, a hybrid procedure where we do most of the dissection uh, laparoscopically, and then use the robot for uh, the reconstructions. Uh, this, uh, I think, saved us time and also uh, enabled us to use the robot uh, uh, most expeditiously. As you know, I mean, if you're doing an operation very efficiently, laparoscopically, you have to question yourself whether you should do robotically or not, unless you really show really better outcomes uh, using the robot. So with this uh, realistic uh, uh, psychology, uh, uh, we use the robot for reconstructive uh, part of the uh, pancreatic procedure, as you can see, <coughs> doing the Dr. 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 Mucosa anastomosis. A uh, lot of studies also show techniques for doing uh, gastrectomies, as you can see on this slide. <coughs> this is one of the largest series uh, uh, coming from uh, Korea, and you can see that uh, the complications as well as uh, the oncologic tumors uh, approach were uh, pretty impressive. Uh, as uh, for any operation, bariatric surgery is also uh, some experience. This is one of the competitive series. I highlighted that uh, in this series, uh, the robot saved uh, operative time as well as hospital stay uh, in these patients. Corrective surgery, uh, the most uh, benefit uh, seemed to be probably related to using the robot in narrow space, so maybe more accurate dissection maybe more better uh, preservation of sexual and bladder function. 
Uh, this is uh, showing one of the uh, cases done at the Cleveland Clinic with, the, with a low anterior resection. And uh, uh, similar to the laparoscopic procedure, the procedures can be done robotically and uh, the section in the pelvis uh, seems to be the most advantage compared to the laparoscopic techniques. Again, multiple uh, groups are already doing colorectal robotic surgery, uh, good results and good oncologic outcomes as well. Another uh, uh, topic which for the general surgeon is uh, using uh, the, the robot for single port surgery. You know, all know the first uh, applications for uh, gallbladders and uh, our center was one of the first uh, groups to do a pilot study and it showed uh, that in about 20 patients this uh, operation is uh, doable. The thyroid is a big opportunity because you uh, totally get rid of the scar in the neck and uh, place it in the axilla. Uh, we've done a number of cases. Uh, this is uh, uh, showing uh, the details. Uh, uh, you enter from the axilla and create a flap to the thyroid and then you use a special retract to elevate the, uh, the flap and you don't use any gas and uh, through this uh, all is possible to uh, remove the thyroid, and this is the view you get. And uh, you can see the upper pole of the thyroid, and uh, the nerve is uh, uh, down, and it's possible to do these operations uh, robotically as well. Uh, this is the incision the patients are left with. It's definitely, uh, you can also see that the patient formed a little bit hypertrophic scar, and it's better that she has it in axilla and in her neck. It's possible to do tall thyroidectomies. This is a patient who had a bilateral axillary approach is done. She was very happy, happy about the cosmetic approach. For any uh, uh, robotic procedure, as discussed by the other speakers as well, there's a learning curve, uh, and we have to be ready for this. We have to discuss openly with the patients. But over time, this learning curve can be shortened. Uh, we've done thyroids as well, as well as adrenalectomies. Uh, uh, benefit for adrenalectomies is that uh, with the laparoscopic technique, uh, you have a small space and it's an ideal uh, situation for using the robot where you eliminate uh, instrument collision and the issues related to the patient's body habitus. And then this is showing one of our uh, posterior cases where we enter the retroperitoneal space, just going through a back incision, and then we create this space with a balloon and then place a, a Three trocars, this patient had all the stronoma, we find with the ultrasound, this is how the trocars look. And then uh, the robot is ducked, similar to a single port uh, technique where the ports are close to each other. But in this small space, uh, in my experience, the robot has helped to really make this operation more ergonomic, as you can see. And uh, uh, we've also shown that for posterior adrenalectomy, uh, the robot saves uh, uh, time regarding the total operative time despite all the docking. And interestingly, the pain score of the patient on day one, despite similar analgesic use, was uh, actually less with after the robotic procedure. Uh, we've also applied this to a lab lateral approach, and uh, larger tumors seem to have a better benefit uh, compared to the small tumors. And uh, interestingly, this is another advantage of the robot is that uh, we calculate the number of instrument changes in a given case of robotic uh, adrenalectin versus laparoscopic. You can see that the difference is very significant. Uh, for large adrenal tumors, we've seen that uh, the robot shortens the operative time as well. That seems to be a little bit uh, better indication. And over time, uh, robotic adrenalectin has become our preferred approach for the adrenals. So what needs to be done, what are the issues? Uh, I think that the first uh, study that I showed you was very uh, clear and really defining the problem. Uh, we have to, obviously, we, in, in order to increase our experience, I think it's reasonable to do more relatively easier cases robotically. But once we are beyond the learning curve, we have to really ask ourselves, what, what is the robot the best for? And in this study, they clearly highlighted that uh, the procedure demanding superior visualization, complex reconstruction, uh, uh, seem to be uh, the best uh, procedures to approach robotically. However, uh, at that time, I think we're just getting uh, outcomes data, but we need to have clinical data really comparing the robot with the laparoscopic procedures. And it's really essential to have this data uh, taking into consideration the costs that are associated with this operation. I think the future is probably going to be like this, uh, but 
to really have an idea about the future, we have to look at the past. Uh, you're seeing the first uh, Da Vinci Council on the left, and uh, over a short time we've come to this uh, uh, level. So uh, overall, uh, we've evaluated the robot in multiple genetic procedures. Uh, the safety and efficacy have been shown. The cost and credentialing are serious issues, and we need to have really comparative outcome, outcome data to move forward. Thank you.